In this video, I'm aiming to show you what does it mean to be a structural engineer. So I will be talking about job opportunities and different industries or departments a structural engineer can work in, my daily tasks and common tools I need to do my job as a structural engineer, what are the expectations from a structural engineer in industry, and I will also give you some very useful tips on how you can be successful in this field, which are based on my own experience in the past few years of working in industry. So make sure to watch until the end as I have a lot to cover. As a structural engineer, there are so many different industries you can work in. For example, you can work in building department, which is the most familiar one to people. However, in building department, you won't be only working on some common short or medium sized building like the one you can see here. Depending on the size of the project your company can win, you may get the chance to work on some very cool buildings or towers like the ones you can see here. Another department you can work in as a structural engineer is transport. For example, you can design these rail or overhead buying structures, which can be a portal frame with truss structure, or it can be a cantilever pole. You can also work on other rail projects, such as designing the structures for train or metro stations, or even you may get the chance to work on airport projects. Another interesting sector you can work in is bridge or dam department, and you can design cool bridges and dams and related structures. Also, you can work in telecommunication sector, and you can design these lattice towers, monopoles, or some rooftop structures. Another interesting department can be energy sector, and you can design these lattice towers, some solar panels, and other related structures. In the past few years, I have worked on a few train station, metro station projects, airport projects, overhead wiring, and telco structures. And here you can see even more exciting projects like stadiums, an iconic opera house, and harbor bridge. These are also built by structural engineers, and you might say, I will never get the chance to work on these projects. Well, you do. I have worked on both of these amazing stadiums here. So if I could do it, you can too. This is the snapshot of the 3D model of Wembley Stadium in MicroStrand software. I think until now, you have realized that opportunities for a structural engineer is endless. And you are correct. Structural engineering never gets boring if you are curious enough to explore different sectors. Also, I'm very keen to know what other sectors you have worked in as a structural engineer that I haven't covered here. Please write down in the comment section below and share it with me and others. Now, let's talk about the common tools I use in my daily work as a structural engineer. Books, technical manuals, design spreadsheets, building standards, and many different design and analysis software, which you can see some of them here, are essential part of my everyday work. And this is the case for almost every structural engineer I interact with daily. I know as a student, you need to read so many books, but don't worry, you're not wasting time. And in fact, when you work as a professional engineer, you need to read even more books and have a deeper dive into building codes and standards, as well as learning about new products and how to actually design them. Site inspection is one of my daily tasks as a structural engineer. Although it may not happen every day, but depends on the projects I get involved in, it might be in my weekly or daily tasks. As a structural engineer, you need to go to site 
and make sure every detail is as per drawings before the concrete pool. Here you can see the photos from my previous site inspection on metro and train stations where I inspected the wall and base slab reinforcement and also my other inspection for the overhead wiring structures which I had mentioned before. In my opinion, this is actually fun as you will be able to see your design in its actual size, which may surprise you how much you were underestimating the size of the members you were looking at on your small screen. Also, I have to say, not every engineer goes to site for their own design. Sometimes you need to inspect other people's design because they don't have time for it. I strongly recommend you to look for opportunities to go to site whenever you get the chance. If you have never had the experience of going to site, my suggestion for you is to take a proactive step and ask your project managers to take you to the site with them. While you are on site, you need to pay attention to the things they are checking and ask as many questions as you have. The other way to learn the process, which is my personal preference, is by asking them to let you do the site inspection and then ask them what you are missing. Trust me, you will learn a lot from the site inspections and you will be a much better engineer as it gives you a better understanding of how things actually get built on site. Let's talk about the expectations from you as a structural engineer so that you can be more prepared for the workplace. The first thing I want to mention is that you need to be constantly learning new things. As I have mentioned before, there are so many different structures that you can design and for that you need to learn a new software, read a new part of a code or totally a new standard or get yourself familiar with the design of a new material, which you may have not ever heard of before. So if learning is a passion for you, then structural engineering is the career for you. The second expectation from you as a structural engineering construction industry is to be proactive and have the desire to take actions and do the research yourself. For example, in the first year of my second job, I learned at least six structural engineering software. And the way I learned them was by going through the manuals and learning by actually doing the job myself and asking the questions along the journey. So it is not like there will be someone to teach you these things and it is all on you. To be honest, you really need to get used to this process as even when you get more experience, there will always be a new software to learn, new material to design, new structural system to deal with, and so on. So I can say structural engineering is great for people who love challenges. I will explain this in an example to make it a little more clear for you. In the good established companies, there's always a checker or verifier or both to check your work before you send it out to clients. However, no one is going to go through your calculations in a very detail and find the small mistakes you may have. To make an example, for my last design, which was a new footbridge in a train station, I provided a set of design calculation to the verifier, which was about 140 pages. How long do you think it took for the verifier to check my design? A few hours only. Yes, just a few hours. The usual process is that the verifier, who is the most or one of the most experienced structural engineers in the company, only looks at the calculation briefly and pays more attention to the final drawings. They usually rely on their so many years of experience and know what makes sense and what doesn't. If there is an abnormal design somewhere on the drawing, then they will look at the calculation more in depth and do their own independent checks. 
So as I said, you are the main person who knows the most about the design and will be blamed if anything goes wrong. So you need to be ready to take the responsibility and double or even triple check everything. The third expectation from you as a structural engineer in the construction industry is to have an effective collaboration with other team members, such as modelers, architects, builders, and other engineers in other disciplines. Before you start any design, you need to develop a clear concept design which requires direct communication with architect. This is usually done by senior engineers who are able to see the bigger picture and are good problem solvers. When you finish your design, you need to give the required information to modelers or drafters to make the 3D model of the structure and also prepare the drawings. Sometimes due to the tight deadline, you need to be able to give as much information as you can to the modelers so they can start their job at the same time as your design and verification process. To be honest, this has been the case for most of my designs. This means having effective collaboration skills with modelers is crucial. So what does effective collaboration mean? This means your markup should be very clear to them to avoid back and forth corrections, which may lead to losing the budget. This may seem easy at first, however, if you consider coordination with other disciplines such as architect, hydraulic, services, etc. at the same time, it will be a little tricky. Drawings which are the final result of your work requires a comprehensive check as if anything goes wrong, it is the designer's responsibility, not the others. The fourth expectation from you as a structural engineer is that you really need to understand the business. As you get more experience, you will be eventually involved in the commercial side of the business. For example, one day you will be a project control, which means you need to be able to measure the required budget to complete the task by different people who are working on the project and also monitor the cost during the different phases of the project. My suggestion to you is to ask the project managers in your team to get you involved in the project control, financial tasks, and commercial risks. This way, you are getting yourself exposed to this environment and will be familiar with the common practice and learn the steps. The truth is, you will be the project manager or project director of your project one day although there are some people who would like to stay in the technical side only, it is also important for them to understand the commercial side of the business. The fifth and tricky expectation from a structural engineer is that you really need to develop your emotional intelligence or EQ skills. To be honest, this is not something that most structural engineers are good at as they get very fixated on the technical side only. Having a good EQ can help you keep your client happy as it helps you to understand their real needs while having a good and effective communication. This means you can bring more job to the company, which makes you non-replaceable. Companies love people who have good client management skills, although they may not even tell you about this. So try to be accessible and responsive to your clients, whether they are your colleagues, external clients, or architects. So as you can see now, structural engineering is not just about sitting behind your laptop and doing the most complicated design. There are many other aspects to this profession which you need to be proactive and get yourself involved if you want to be successful. The sixth and last expectation from you as a structural engineer, which I want to talk about, is that it is possible that you need to work overtime when there is submission or deadline to finish a certain stage of the project. Construction industry has too many submissions and while the normal working hours is 38 to 40 hours per week, 
you may need to work much more than this to meet these very frequent deadlines. I have personally worked more than 60 hours per week at the time of submissions. I'm sure this is not the same for every company. However, I know some companies where 60 hours per week is considered as normal working hours. I know this is crazy, but if you want to work on cool projects, then you need to be ready for long hours too. If you found the content useful, please don't forget to like and share the video with your friends and also subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching this video and I would love to hear from your experience in the comment section below.